let's uh, get into the science of things. And um, I know that uh, you nerd out. You do a lot of research. That's why I love having you on the program. Hold on. Let me just hold this up for the camera. She brought. <laughs> oh, no, no. I'm not gonna, one. He's outing my nerdiness. Not two. There's uh, really good data on this. Three, four pages. Four full pages now, of notes. Come on. I love it's, it. It's good information. It is. It's I may all fantastic. have gone a little overboard. No, I'm really looking forward to sharing this. All and right. It's, we're going to put all of this up on pcrm.org slash podcast oh, as well. Uh, this text, courtesy of Lee Crosby. Uh, so, Miss Veggie Quest. Yes. Uh, if a woman eats meat every day, I mean, just a hardcore carnivore. Right. Like, how much does that increase the risk of developing uh, breast cancer? All right. So first off, we know that eating animal protein generally increases levels of something called insulin-like growth factor one or IGF-1, and that is linked to increased breast cancer risk. So that's sort of on the side. But red meat in terms of breast cancer is actually especially toxic. Um, Perhaps my favorite study on this subject was the Nurses Health Study. They followed 88,000 women about 20 years over a 20-year period, and what they found was that there was a, I want to make sure I get the number right, a 13% higher risk of, of developing breast cancer for every serving of red meat per day that women ate. So each additional serving, 13% increase in risk. And they controlled for lots of things. So when you see that dose-response relationship, it's concerning. And you think, well, hey, who's eating more than one serving of red meat a day? Well, one serving of red meat is like the size of a deck of cards. That's really small. It's like four ounces or something. Yeah, right? I think, it, yeah, no, three ounces, three Jeez, ounces. Yeah. So it's not even, you know, a quarter pounder, you're already way over the over the limit. So, again, if someone's eating sausage at breakfast and they eat maybe a ham sandwich or a burger for dinner, you've already, you know, three servings plus right there. All right, 13 yeah. times. 13 percent, not times. Uh, <laughs> it's not that huge of a difference. But, again, the fact that when you stair step up the servings of meat, you stair step up the risk, even controlling for lots of other things. So, all right, it's so concerning. Thirteen times I misspoke, but thirteen percent, and then you eat it three times a day. What? That's thirty. It, it's thirty-nine. Yeah, yeah you're thirty-nine percent at that point. Insane. Yeah, so it's pretty insane. And again, what's even worse? Meat's never good for you. It's really, really dangerous for preteens and teens. It breaks my heart every time I see, you know. A a young teenage girl eating a burger, I kind of, I don't, <laughs> but I kind of want to go just take it out of her hands, put it in the trash can. Um, because again, this is this risk is even worse when girls are preteens and teens because their breast tissue is developing and it's more, those the tissue is more sensitive to carcinogens at that point in time. Mm. So again, red meat's never good. Please don't feed your daughter's meat. Just, just move it off the plate. That would make me a very happy woman. Red meat, white meat. There, you you said no. There, meat. So there are there's carcinogens in, in in cooked chicken, cooked fish, particularly at high temperatures. We can absolutely get into that. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, you're just talking about when the woman eats meat. Uh, that's I had no idea. I guess that makes sense. Doctor Barnard and I have talked about how the hormones in the dairy are just horrible for um, developing girls as as well. Oh, it really. And again, in countries where they don't. Where they don't drink much dairy and they drink, you know, soy milk or eat soy products instead, much lower rates of breast cancer. And again, that's even family history, five to ten percent of cases of breast cancer are related to sort of those inherited gene issues. Mm -hmm. But yet we know conservatively that a third of breast cancer cases are related to lifestyle. That's a you know, that's a lot of control that women have. It's not again, nothing no one's to blame for breast cancer. You, There's no guarantee about preventing it, but you can do a lot of things to reduce your risk or reduce the risk of recurrence if you've had it. Uh, the other lifestyle factors, I know you were just talking about alcohol. What are some other things? So alcohol is a biggie. Um, smoking is a biggie. Staying active, that's a big one. And if you you know get pregnant, breastfeeding after pregnancy, all of those are things um, that can decrease the risk of breast cancer, especially alcohol. Sorry, ladies, with the with your glass of wine, but even one glass a day increases risk. Yeah, and uh, you know, people think oh, a glass of red wine a day is healthy. It depends on what what health benefit you're going for. I right? Suppose. Yeah. If breast cancer is your issue, then it's not. Uh, what about you? Would think though, 
if meat is bad, then you look at Eastern diets like Japan, where right. they eat less meat and well, more, where they did, yeah, right, more <laughs> rice, more vegetables. They would have a lower risk of, of cancer or a lower rate of, of cancer. Oh yeah, there. and they do. I mean, significantly lower. So back in the 1940s, in particular, when some of this research started, um, the Japanese diet again was very high in carbohydrate relative to American standards. It was about 80 percent carbs, uh, about a little more than 10 percent protein, which is about what you get in whole plant foods, sidebar, and then only 7% of calories from fat, and very, very little of that was from animal fat. And breast cancer rates were a fraction of what they were in the United States then and now. I mean, just much, much lower. So again, the traditional Japanese diet, which we're, again, we're basing, that's based on rice or sweet potatoes in the case of Okinawa. It was a very carbohydrate-centric diet, very, very little animal protein or meat. Uh, got a handful of blue zones over in Japan yeah. as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, so Okinawa is one of the blue zones, and again, their diet was traditionally, it's changing because we're bringing in our Western foods, but traditionally was based on sweet potatoes, actually. Yeah, so let's talk about that shift, because as these fast food restaurants that originated here uh, have moved over into other markets, I would expect then that we're starting to see a higher rate or more prevalence of cancer. Yeah, so sadly that is the case because, I mean, it's tempting to think that, wow, maybe, you know, maybe Japanese women just have amazing breast cancer fighting genes and that's why they don't get it. And it turns out that no, when, so I think these studies actually started back in the 50s when women moved from Japan to Hawaii and they adopted the more, um, the standard American diet or the sad diet when they went to Hawaii, their first generation out, breast cancer risk was increased by three times. So not 3%. This time it is three times. And then for the next generation down who'd been exposed to that standard American diet, you know, in utero and growing up, they had five times the risk of their grandmothers of developing breast cancer. So same genes, new environment, you get a huge increase in risk in breast cancer. So it's not the genes. It's the food. It's, let me ask you a socioeconomic question here. I Because I guess to a certain extent, uh, meat is still a luxury for some families over there um and the more money you have the more meat i'm sure that you're able to afford so is there any sort of correlation between affluent families and the rate of cancer versus families that are struggling a little bit more to get by and would have to rely more on rice and vegetables yeah there is so typically having more money gives you better health outcomes in this case having more money means eating more meat so there was a study done in japan where women who are wealthy and ate meat daily when they were compared to women who were, you know, lower income and ate little or no meat. The wealthy women actually had, I believe it was eight and a half times higher risk of breast cancer. So again, normally you have better health care when you get wealthier, but in this case, because and they controlled for a lot of things. So here it really does look like the meat was the deciding factor in that. Let's uh, get scientific here for a second. Uh, we talked a little bit about the carcinogens, and we touched briefly on the animal proteins, but let's dive a little bit deeper into that IGF-1. Right, I know. So, again, that's it's a, it's a growth factor, hence the GF part. And eating animal protein as opposed to plant protein is very much linked to higher levels of this growth factor in women. Um, and on the flip side, women who follow a vegan diet have 13% lower levels on average. Again, this is just one study, um, levels of IGF-1 in their blood. So that's already going to um, be protective. And again, the science shows this. I actually found a meta-analysis of 17 different studies that followed women over time. And they found that IGF-1 levels were directly linked to increased breast cancer risk. Mm. So regardless of age of the woman. So not something you really want to have high. And for men listening out there in podcast land, the same thing holds true for prostate cancer. Higher IGF-1 levels are linked to higher rates of prostate cancer. Yeah, we're going to have Dr. Niebuhr on in uh, just a little while. We're going to talk about Excellent. men. Men, the meat cancer <laughs> Men connection. will have their day. God, yeah, God knows that, uh, you know, and that's the thing. Like, meat is such a manly thing, you know. You kill uh, it, you grill it, and rah. Yeah, man, and then you suffer horrible diseases as a yeah. result. <laughs> we gotta, we got to kind of end that stigma there.